Hey everybody, Pete Meyer, Motor Age Magazine. Welcome to another edition of How To. Well, it's back to the lab scope and the low amp clamp, picking up where we left off the last time we had the scope out. I think that uh, the next few videos, we're gonna explore using some of the tools that we've been exposed to so far to explore circuits on the vehicle. Let's start with the injector circuit on the RAM pickup. Stick around, that's coming up next. Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for sticking around. First, let me explain the Auto Mechanic of Chicago t-shirt I'm wearing. First, it is a hot son of a gun there uh, down here in Florida today, and I'm sweating my behind off, so forgive me if I'm trying to dress a little more comfortably than the full out and out <laughs> attire that you normally see me in. But I also want to point out that this was a tremendous training event. It's no cost training available to you, professional technicians, shop owners, educators, all you have to do is make it to McCormick Place July 26th through the 29th. There's some more information at the end of the video. Please take advantage of this great opportunity. There's some fantastic instructors ready to help you grow in your profession and become better technicians. Uh, so by all means, stick around and check that out. Okay, so now we got the plug out of the way. Let's get to the topic for today. We're going back to using the low amp clamp, in this case, on the injector circuits on the RAM pickup. Now, one of the things I like about the low amp clamp is its ability to help me gauge uh, issues in a group of components like the injectors. I can check them all at one time by monitoring their current flow. So if there's an electrical problem, that's gonna uh, show up. And if you look very closely at some of the, uh, the things I'm gonna show you that that pattern will show you, uh, there's some other information I can get there as well. Now, to get these patterns, I usually like to go right to the fuse box. Uh, I'll pull up the wiring diagrams, and as you can see here, that uh, injector is fed by fuse number 64. Uh, that's the fuse that you're looking at here in this picture. And then I can go ahead and put my uh, fuse jumper lead or my fuse buddy in place, put my low amp clamp there, and then start the vehicle and get that current pattern. Well, I kind of expected what I was gonna get on the screen, but I thought it was important to share that with you. So here, take a look at what I got checking current at that fuse. Not a pretty picture, is it? In fact, it doesn't look anything like a current ramp for any component I'm familiar with. And the reason that you're seeing what you're seeing is because that fuse powers other components other than the injectors. You have to remember that your low current clamp is going to, or your high current clamp for that matter, is going to report total current flow that it sees and translate to that to the voltage input that your scope is going to put on the screen for you to see. So what we're looking at here is there's several components being activated and it's showing me the total uh, current passing through that clamp. Now, sometimes I can still use that here, not too great, not too keen about it, so I need to find another solution. But there is a find another solution that we can do. Remember, the beauty of using current as a diagnostic tool is that I can check anywhere in the circuit I want to. So I can go follow that power feed to the injectors if I wish. And here you'll see in the schematic, it actually splits off. There is a tie-in to either bank of the engine. So if I wanted to start tearing up the harness looking for that pink power wire, I could do that to check each bank. But there's another alternative. Why not go to the ground side? So that's what I did here. Uh, you've seen me do this before, going to directly to the ECM to pick up the connections I need for my scope. In this vehicle, it's very easy to get to, so it's not an issue. Um, so I went ahead and identified that there are four wires together. That's five, six, seven, and eight. And then I also see on the schematic that there are another four for one, two, three, four. Uh, and they're all grouped together, so I can at least check four at a time, which is what you're going to see in this capture. Now notice the spacing on the current ramp is not even. There's a kind of a gap in between there. Why is that? Because five, six, seven, eight is not the firing order. And that's what you're seeing. These are the injectors operating in their firing order. So just like we did before, it's very easy for me to add a reference. So let's go ahead and connect to the ground side of the injector on a voltage scale and see what that does. And now you can take a look at the capture I got from that. Okay, now you see we have a reference that now I can use to identify which injector I'm looking at and which current pattern that I'm looking at in case I do see an issue. Now I want to recap and point out, we talked about before about the need for some scopes to have some type of attenuation. You have to watch out for what kind of voltage level uh, that component may 
send into your scope. Uh, when that coil is turned off in that solenoid, that magnetic field collapses and that creates an inductive voltage kick that can generate pretty high on some vehicles, two, 300 volts. Uh, same with the primary side of the ignition coil. So you need to know what your scope's uh, input limit is. Now in the case of the old 3000 series Pico, it was 50 volts. The newer ones are 100 volts. Just to be on the safe side, I went ahead and placed an attenuator in line and set my scope accordingly. Uh, I think on Snap-on, it's a 400 volt with a voltage uh, overload protection. You know, I, uh, to me, I, I'd be kind of leery about that. Last thing I want to do is let the smoke out of a very expensive tool. So I want to make sure that I know what I'm going to measure before I connect that scope to it. Uh, I probably won't exceed that 400 volts very often, if I do at all. Uh, and then I think some of the other scopes on the market, again, you just have to check and make sure you know what that input limit is so you don't blow up your scope in the process. All right, so now we have that set. We can take a look at the patterns. We don't see any inconsistencies, but if I did, uh, that could lead to maybe some electrical problems that I could home in and look at that individual uh, cylinder. And that's what you're gonna take a look at here. Okay, now I'm just looking at just the voltage pattern and the amperage pattern for the injector, uh, one injector itself. And you know what? I think that's where we're going to stop for now. We'll pick up the rest of this topic the next time I see you here on How To. Hey, as promised, more information on uh, NACE Auto Mechanica 2017, July 26th through the 29th. Uh, guys, gals, if you are looking to get good training, this is no better opportunity for you to do so. We are offering over 140 different sessions over two and a half days, and they are uh, being presented by the best instructors our industry has to offer. Uh, big names like John Thornton, Bernie Thompson, Scott Manna, G. Trulia, John Anello. Oh my gosh, I lost a list that I just can't get all, all over on a little short video like this. And on the aftermarket side, we got some great corporate training groups coming out. Federal Moguls, Garage Guru, Standard Motor Parts, Ryan Coyman and his team, uh, CTI, Chris Chesney and his guys, Napa, Tom Rake and his guys. And again, more than I can list in a simple short video. But the key here is, this is no cost to you. All you have to do is get there. We're providing this resource to you. You just have to take advantage of it. Go to motorage.com forward slash register 17 and make sure that you use my code, my personal invitation, PMYT2017 when you register. Do it today.